What's up scavengers, I'm Skandinavia here. Today we will take a look at my mesa colony and give them a brand new nest, so let's get to it. If you ever are in the need of a new nest, just spin a spinning table like this and boom, one should appear just like this. Good luck! This nest is homemade. I made it out of whitong since I really like to work with this material. I know that messer are known to bite through white tongue sometimes, but I am willing to risk that. The nest is however designed with that in consideration. The chambers are all far away from the edge and the nest is only about 50% deep into the block. This gives me an extra chance to spot them trying to dig their way out. The lid of this nest is of glass, fastened with magnets. I wanted to try this out after seeing it in some builds online and in Tar Heel Ants products. However, I do want to say that I would recommend using this method only on smaller nests or thinner glass since I would want to say that the glass is a bit too loose, but it still holds good enough. The nest have two hydration chambers. Always include two or more hydration chambers if you can in a nest this large. This is so that you can shift the humidity in the nest if you have mold outbreaks. This is the size of their old nest. Pretty large upgrade, right? I had never done an upgrade this large, so I was very nervous to handle all the tubing. The general idea of the setup was this. The old nest being connected to the new nest via an L connector, and the new nest being connected via a long viewing tube to the outworld. This is to force the ants to pass through the new nest, getting them moved in quicker. Okay, so this is the old setup completely sponsored by Ants Australia. I have to say that their products are really holding up. I like the Outworld a ton. But as you can see, they are in grave need of an upgrade. They have actually stored a ton of brood in the Outworld, under the sand and in the test tubes. Never push a colony this far before moving if you don't have to. Messer barbers are so cool to have. They grow fast, are interactive, have polymorphism, which means that they have different sized workers, and they have this super cool behavior to store and eat seeds. I really love them and should have moved them earlier. Well, better late than never. A good tip when working with tubing is to have a cup of boiling hot water and to dip the ends of the tubing in it. This will make the tubing soft and modular, making it easy to use them as connectors and go over or inside other tubings like I do here. Well, not much more to talk about, so let's get into the actual disassembly of the old setup. As I said, this is my first time doing such a big move, which means that I did some mistakes. First of all, why did I even attempt to use tweezers in order to pick up the escapees? And why did I put them in a box when I could just put them into the outworld? I noticed this while doing it and corrected myself, but knowing this would have saved a few seconds and ants escaping for sure. Well, luckily Messer is super slow and doesn't sting or do anything at all really, just from a few bites. So it wasn't really a big deal. However, as you can see by my gestures, <laughs> I was uh, kind of stressed when I saw that there were quite a few escapees. But again, nothing really happened since it's such an easy species, which is why they are considered a beginner species. With the outworld sealed up and the escapees collected, it was time to connect the outworld as well. This went on smoothly, and only two escapees. Again, always put the tube in some hot water so it's easily moldable. When picking up ants like I do here, obviously make sure you don't squeeze them too hard. The force of you just holding your fingers together is more than enough. Well, after that it was just a waiting game. The first worker to explore the nest was super quick, probably whilst I was connecting the outworld since the old nest was super close connected to the new one. However, it really took some time for ants to really explore the long tube I had between the outworld and the nest. Some were close, walking and walking, but then always just turning around at the last second. But then, about 10 minutes in, the first ant made contact with the nest from the outworld. So funny to see them interact like this. It's almost as you can see what they are thinking. Whoa, what's this? This is so cool. It smells familiar. Oh, wait, I smell brood. Oh my god, here you are. I'm so happy I could find you guys. What's up, Mark? Oh my god, oh my god, I have to tell the others. <laughs> oh my god, you guys, the other part of the colony is just across this tube. Let's go. No ants had still moved brood into the new nest, but they were definitely interested. 
I decided to hydrate the nest to encourage them to move. And would you look at that, 10 minutes later they had moved some seeds into it and there were more ants inside. This is going great. But then, it arrived. The sky got darkened by a towering shadow. The poor ants looked up and could see the claws of a monster. No, could it be? The ants kept tilting their tiny heads only to realize that they were under attack from the almighty world destroyer. Its fierce face stared at its prey. Its lethal look scared away every living creature nearby. But the ants couldn't escape. It was too late. They were under her command now. They could do nothing more than to carry on with their business as if nothing else had happened. If they had made an uproar against this huge beast, they knew that that would be the end. <laughs> okay, all jokes aside, the move went great, and only one day after, they were all settled in inside of the new nest. If you noticed, this nest had dedicated chambers, deeper than the rest, for the storage of seeds, and it looks like they had already put that extra depth to good use. It is truly mesmerizing just to look at ants working like this. Everyone always up to something. Take a look at this red-headed super major. So gorgeous. This major was newly enclosed and therefore hadn't fully developed her exoskeleton yet. So she was yellow. <laughs> so cute. Here you can see some ants sharing some ant bread. This is what the messer genus makes out of the seeds they collect. The super majors crush the seeds with their huge mandibles, and the rest of the workers then help mixing it with their saliva, and works it into a rich food for the larvae and workers. Awesome seeing them share like this. The old nest was being emptied out, and if you look closely you can actually see the queen. I didn't notice that while filming, so this is all the footage you get from her. <laughs> Whilst you're watching this extra footage, I can tell you about the 5k special I have been planning. To celebrate hitting 5000 subscribers, me and a friend have created a treasure hunt. More info on how it all works will be covered in a future separate video. This treasure hunt will be online, so everyone can participate. It will be done with levels containing puzzles that you have to solve in order to progress. And don't worry, you don't need some extra knowledge. Everyone is capable of beating all the levels, you just have to put your mind to it. The first scavengers to complete all the levels will be the winners of a huge giveaway. The prize pool will consist of nests sponsored by Formica ant kits and ant colonies. The ant colonies will however only be available to the winners if they live in Europe. But the ant nests and setups will be available to the winner wherever you live on the planet. This means that there will be several winners. Each and everyone can choose their own prize. I really hope you're as excited for this just as much as I am. And be sure to keep an eye out here on the YouTube channel for future information. But also on my Instagram at ants underscore Scandinavia, where I will definitely be posting more info about the hunt. Alright, so that was it. Hope you liked this awesome messer move. I sure did. Until next time, have a good one, scabs. Bye!